This is the Development Review Board for Burlington for January 18th. And um, do we have members of the public somewhere here, Scott? Yes, we do. We do, yeah. okay. So we take up items as they are on in the agenda. And when we call each agenda item, we'll ask the applicant or anybody else who wants to speak on that to um, identify themselves and indicate to Scott who will admit you folks to the meeting. And as needed, we will swear people in. Um, we also ask when you are admitted to the meeting that you provide Scott with a mailing address. Okay. Um, communications, there's nothing that's not on the website at this point. True. Online. Okay. Minutes, we have the minutes from the last meeting. If anybody has any comments on it, let me know because we'll sign them and get them back to Celeste. Mm -hmm. Um, so we go right into the consent agenda. And the first thing is 266 Pine Street. Justin Bonell is, I see Justin's here. Is there anybody else here to speak on um, that item? Right, Justin. Uh, we have one other person raising their hand and uh, in Zoom, Maria, Maria Sandoval. So I'll let Maria speak. For swearing in um if, well this is, on is here for crowley street she's our next consent okay. Okay. all right so justin can you hear me yep okay so this is on the consent agenda which means that the staff is recommending approval and we have a couple of conditions of approval on there have you seen that yes and are you okay with that yes great and I take it there's no member of the public here to object on this. Uh, no one has their hand raised. Has any member of the board uh, object to treating this as a consent item? <clears throat> then does somebody want to make a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Okay, Brooks. And this is uh, ZP 21796-266. Pine Street, I move that we approve the application and adopt staff findings and recommendations. Caitlin seconds, any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Um, so Justin, it's approved. Excellent, all right. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, uh, next item is 28 Crowley Street. And I guess Maria Sandoval is here. And again, uh, is there anybody else who uh, is wanting to speak on 28 Crowley Street? Andy Jazuski is the property owner, so he can be admitted as well, Scott. Yeah, yeah, I see Andy's hand is raised. If anyone else wants to speak to this item, raise your hand. It's just uh, the applicant and uh, Andy. So. So um, I'll ask uh, Maria and Andy, this is recommended also for um, approval, consent agenda approval. Um, have you seen the uh, staff's recommendations? Yes. yes. Okay, and are you okay with those? Yes, we. Uh, I am. I approve, yes. I approve Maria's too. Okay, good. Um, and is there anybody on the board who objects to treating this as a consent item? No. So how about a motion on this one? Like a motion um, for ZP 217928 Crowley Street. I move that we um, approve the application and adopt staff findings. Second. I see Jeff seconding. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. That is approved. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank okay. you. So um, the next item is uh, 200 Shelvin Street. Uh, Mary Stanton, uh, is she here or somebody else here representing that project? Well, uh, I see Vermont Donuts. I'm going to guess that has something to do with this application. <laughs> oh, yeah. Looks uh, good. Mary. Yes. That must be Mary Stanton, too. Uh, I'm Teresa Fletcher. I'm, can you hear me? Yes. And you are? I represent the, the property owner there, Vermont Donuts. Um, 
the HR director for Dunkin' Donuts, basically here. Okay, and and Mary, and is there anybody else here to speak on this application, Scott? Huh. Hi, can you yeah. hear me, Mary? No, Stanley? Yeah, Mary, you're part of the applicant. I want to see if there's any members of the. Public. Yes, the, my husband Scott Stanton. He's the actual sign builder slash installer slash electrician. <laughs> I mean, he's he's not a member of the he's not a member of the public. Yeah. No, but I just am here if you need. If you need okay. all questions. Okay. Anybody? So that's it, right? That's, that's us. us. Okay, so I'll ask Mary. Oops. Her, her husband and lower hand. And the other person's name is uh, Luke, Teresa. Teresa. The three of you would, if you would uh, swear to tell the truth and hold truth under pain and penalty of perjury. I do. I do. Okay. So um, you're requesting uh, uh, a new sign and theoretically heading to the towards more compliance. Um, uh, Two new yes. signs. Two new signs that are one's a wall, one's a pylon. Right. And they're both slightly, one would say slightly more compliant than the existing signs. Oh, I think a lot more if you look at the square footage. Yeah, and look at the height. Um, I mean, when you look at the standard, which is six feet and they're 18 feet, that's mm. three times the height. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's more, anyways. So um, I can see, I, I think it's pretty straightforward what, what you're intending to do. They're both internally lit, which again is a non complying thing. Um, and they're substantially bigger, but I understand that you're not really obligated to replace these signs if you're grandfathered in with these. Um, so, I'm sort of going to ask if the board has any any members of the board have questions for the applicant on this. It's a fairly straightforward application in some ways. I had a question um, because there was a note about the sign still being in the sight line for the driveway. And when I look at these two signs compared to each other, there's really more blockage from the new sign um, at eye level for pedestrians and for cars and just wondering if you took that into consideration at all with this design. It's, this is Scott, that is set back quite a ways even from the sidewalk there. Um, so I don't see that as being an issue. It's set way back from the street. Mary, is this is this yours? Was the sight line from the their own driveway? Is that this one's mine, Caitlin? Um, the sight line starts back from the front property line, which would just be a foot or two behind the sidewalk. That's where, yeah, that's where we clear sight triangle. It goes back um, like twenty or twenty five feet, um, where there's specific other limitations with regard to fencing and stuff, but. Um, the freestanding sign does have that requirement as well to to not um, block view. We were trying to use the same pole and electrical. Yeah. And it's only three feet wide overall. Yeah. Well, um, I don't know if anybody else is going to make any comments. I, it's I understand that you're really not obligated to um, to improve this a whole lot. Um, so we're supposed to be somewhat, I guess, um, pleased with it moving to be more compliance, but. Is that a criterion, Brad? Dear is please. Well, <laughs> except, I don't know what to say, accepting. I mean, you know, it's, it's two and a half times the height requirement that we can have. But you know, it's the the original one was three times the height requirement, so height limitation. So it's that's good. And Brad, oh, sorry. Sure. Sure. You said you said that that, that this one was uh, grandfathered in. Uh, the existing sign is grandfathered in. Yes. Okay. Um, and so they 
they can replace it as long as it moves in the direction of compliance and subject to our approval. That's right. Sure. Substantially greater compliance has to be in compliance or substantially greater compliance. We've had a few of these over the years and dimensions have been the driving factor and the ones that have gotten approved have been smaller. Uh, although what Caitlin has pointed out with the clear sight uh, item is something unique to this. <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I think we do have a history of, of approving signs that are creeping towards compliance. I guess that's how I would look at this one. Yeah, um, the problem is you could just, you know, if it fell down, they could put it the exact same sign back up, right? Right. You know, Right. It's like make it it's a little smaller, it's still there. That it's yeah. I mean, I'd like to see it smaller, but I understand the issue. Yeah. Anybody else want to have any comments on this? I, I you know, I guess I'll I'll say to to Mary and the applicant, I mean obviously we're I, I guess I'll speak for myself that. It's nice that it is moving a little smaller than it is, but it's way bigger than any sign that could be installed now. So we have to look at both sides of that. You know, yes, we're we're moving towards compliance. Um, we're not thrilled, but we may end up having to accept it. Well, the other thing too is I have to deal with um, Duncan Brands and. Uh -huh what they want me to do, make for signs. I, I guess I understand that, yes, yes. That's why it's in that vertical position. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, any other comments from the board on this one? Um, I don't think we can want to beat this to death. Um, I guess not. Um, I guess, Mary, yeah, we will uh, probably deliberate at the end of the meeting tonight on this. Um, so unless there's any final word you want to make, we'll, we'll close. No, I would appreciate you um, looking that it is more towards compliance. Um, I think especially the, uh, the wall sign for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I think it looks pretty. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's nice and clean, nice and clean. We, we took do donuts off the name, but not the menu. Okay, good. I appreciate it. All right, thank that, you. We'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Thanks. So um, the next item on the agenda is 501 Pine Street. And there's a request to defer this, Scott? Um, yeah, uh, Ryan, do you wanna pipe in with the details? Yeah, um, they went to DAB last week um, and DAB wants them to adjust a few things. So definitely gonna hold off on their recommendation to provide to you, the DRB. So they wanna have time to prepare some revisions. So this is uh, deferred to a date? Uncertain. To right. Correct. So does somebody wanna make a motion to uh, defer 501 Pine Street to an uncertain date? Make a motion on ZP 21800-501 Pine Street. I move that we defer this item to a future DRB meeting date uncertain. Second, Chase. Any discussion, all in favor? You with us, AJ? Yeah, I'm here. Did you see me? No, I didn't see your hand. My hand's Thanks. over on the other side of my camera. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, so unanimous. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So then the next item is 125 South Cove Road. Uh, mm -hmm. Cliff Deachin, uh or David Boardman. I see Cliff. Anybody else here for this application besides Cliff? Uh, if anyone else wants to speak, raise your hand. No, it looks like it's just Cliff, Brad. Okay. Um, Cliff, I will swear you in. Do you swear to tell the truth and hold truth under pain and penalty of perjury? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, so this seemed fairly straightforward. The uh, 
there was a few conditions. There was something about the uh, plan 1C. Um, so I don't know, you wanna make some presentation on this? Uh, no, through the DAB, we had a couple uh, options that we reviewed with them and we all settled on 1C, which I don't think this is the one, but it's, uh, it's basically the compliant one. We discussed the width of the garage and what yeah. makes the width of a garage architecturally and spatially and volumetrically. Um, but 1C was uh, a good compromise for everyone to, to settle on and DAB approved that. Okay. And, and you've been through the conservation board. They were approving it. Like, Correct. We've, we've gone through them. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, it's a classic, somewhat shingle style house. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's uh, in compliance with all the setbacks at this point. Um, I'm not sure there's much that we would say about it. As any comments from any members of the board? No, no. I like what's there, but this looks nice too. <laughs> okay, well, I guess we could pepper you with a thousand questions, Cliff, but I, I don't think we need to. So I think we will close the hearing on this. Great, thank you. Thanks, Cliff. <clears throat> okay, the next, we have one more item on the agenda, which is 43 Star Farm Road. Yeah. That also is uh, to be deferred, right? Uh, yeah, they're still working on their TDM um, because it's uh, just a site plan review. It's not yeah. a public hearing. We don't need to do a date and time certain. Okay. Basically, it'll be in, I think, late February or early March. Yeah, you asked, Scott, you asked for, uh, or they asked for March 8th. Should we do it till in time not certain? Uh, you can do it for March 8th. I have it on the schedule anyhow. But we don't need to make a motion on this one. No, you don't. Okay. Well, I don't think there's anything we can do to make things more complicated at this point. So maybe we'll accept that it's simple. Yeah, I appreciate it. Okay. Um, unless any, there's any other new business to bring up, we're going to close the, um, the review, review board meeting. And we're going, and we have two items to deliberate. Um, for ZP 21799 200 Children Street, I move that uh, we approve the wall sign with the condition, I think is the way we should do this, that the uh, freestanding sign is not included as part of this application. I don't know. Uh, that, that's what I'm going to go with. A second on that. I'll, I'll second that the intent. I think we got to talk about it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure that gets exactly what we want, but I like the idea. Yeah, I, I think giving a little bit of reason why this the other sign is not approved would be helpful. You know, whether we say that it, it just it's not substantially coming into compliance and is adding additional sight line um, obstruction. Obstruction. I'm truthfully, I'm a little ambivalent about the sight line issue. And um, I, I, I'm much more focused on the um, can we dimensions. Can, can we say that we approve the application as it relates to the wall sign but deny the application as it relates to the the freestanding sign and leave yeah. it that. right but i do, do we want to say that because that one should be they can i don't i mean they can come back to us yeah they can come back to us with another design i mean they can yeah. i mean the intent is it's got to at least from my perspective but i think we all have different ideas yeah. of what would pass so i think if we just deny it outright and see what they come back at that may get us all to agree to it but i think we have an extended discussion about what they need to do to to have it passed tonight 
But I think we should have the words in there that is does not is not substantially more compliant. I think those words yeah. should be in the um, motion. In the, right. yeah. yeah, you're both good with that. Yeah, I'm good with that. Any other discussion on this, AJ? Yeah, I mean, I just think we should be a little, because, you know, it's not, I don't think we need to say it, but we should think about this. We've let people, you know, people might say, well, why can't I just replace the sign in its exact same size? Um, you know, if the thing caught fire, I think they'd have the right, or if someone plowed it over with a truck jumping the curb, they'd have the right, right. to put it up exactly as they're putting it up. So it's a little funky that when they're coming to sort of put a new sign in and that we're saying, no, it's not in substantial compliance. Um, it's just something we want to think about next time we have one of these issues because it does come up. So I'm fine yeah. with the decision tonight, but is that there's no real way to articulate it. An, an ordinance issue to you or like, cause that's how the ordinance is written. It's, it's yeah, it's I mean, impression. it's also how the law exists, right? If it's non-conforming or whatever, and you didn't take it down, your non-conformity burns down, then you're good to go. Um, I'm not sure who said this to me, but somebody said to me that the intent of zoning was to move properties in the direction of compliance. It's black letter law. Yes. And and I think that's really what we're trying to do here. We're trying to move things in the direction of compliance. And, you know, we're taking sort of saying that this is not moving enough in that direction. Right. So. I, I agree with that. I think that's that's what we're trying to get to with this particular case. Right. Okay. So we have a motion. A second. This is more discussion. All in favor of the motion? One, two, three, four, five. HA zero. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Six. Six zero. On ZP 2179125 South Cove Road, I move that we approve the application, adopt staff's findings and recommendations. Second. Second. Brooks, any discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Okay. <laughs>